Hello there, and welcome to Desert Island Doctor Who. The idea of this video is of course similar to Desert Island Discs, in this case the idea being what five Doctor Who stories would you take with you to a desert island? Wingy Media did a video like this a couple of weeks ago, and since talent borrows and genius steals, I thought I'd rip the idea off wholesale. What made the idea more interesting was the rules that were implemented, because I mean otherwise you just list your top five stories or you, you just end up with five Tom Baker stories or four Tom Baker stories and one Seventh Doctor story was that you could only choose one Doctor per story so you could only have different Doctors um, so I thought that would make an interesting video now for my first choice I would say the War Games would be one story I would definitely take with me to a desert island. I've always loved the war games, even back in the day, the early 90s when it first came out on video, when that wasn't a popular opinion. I mean these days it's a much more loved and respected story. I think it even won the best story of the 1960s in DWM a few years ago. But back in the early 90s that was not a popular opinion. It was generally regarded as a boring story which I never understood even then I always thought it was great stuff from start to finish and it's got a great doctor and companion team with Patrick Troughton and Jamie and sexy little Zoe so yeah I think I'm going to include the war games I just love the whole idea of it I love the, his the mix of historicals the way it starts out almost as a historical story and then starts to turn into something else and of course it's hugely important to the mythos with the introduction of the Time Lords and it's the end of the era. Rarely up until New Who does an era end quite so conclusively as it does in the War Games with the, th the Second Doctor, both his companions and the whole era, even, even black and white, all coming to an end at the end of this story. So that's my first choice. My second choice, well you have to have a Tom Baker story and given that it's me it's probably predictable that I'm going to choose a Tom and Lala story and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I think my choice for the Tom and Lala story to take with me to a desert island is actually going to be Sharda. Now again this is a story that I have always loved even when it was first released on video back in the early 90s. I think it was released in Australia very early in 1993. Now by this time I'd managed to see all of the rest of season 17 and I was already a huge Tom and Lala fan and I was already aware that the you know the, the fan consensus on season 17 was a complete load of balls. Um, so I was really looking forward to seeing that and the idea of it, the idea of this missing story that was never completed was really interesting and I thought the the original v VHS version which just had Tom Baker doing the narration to fill in all the stuff that wasn't filmed I thought that version was fantastic I loved that story I loved that story for decades um, I was actually quite leery of the idea of them doing the animation because as in as it turned out the animated stuff takes the story's length from being about an hour and 40 to like two hours 20 and I was a little bit concerned that, you know, it might drag the story's pace down a little and make it less zippy, and I might not like it as much. But as it turned out, that wasn't the case at all. I thought the, the animated version that came out on Blu-ray DVD a couple of years ago was absolutely fantastic. I thought the animation was one of the best animations they've done, and it was very well suited to the style of the story. And it was just, yeah, I love Shada. Um, I'm taking that to a desert island any day of the week. The third story that I would take to a desert island, probably a little bit more of a surprise, I'm going to take a Colin. And the one I'm going to take, which might not be surprising if you've heard this channel before, is Attack of the Cybermen. Now this is a deeply unpopular story. It was a deeply unpopular story when I first saw it, good God, 30 years ago more than. Um, and it's still a deeply unpopular story today, and I've never understood why. I've, when I first saw this story 
good god it was like 1988 i'm not going to tell you how old i was um i got it in a batch of stories from a friend who had a load of i don't know where the hell he got them all from a load of stories and i got him to take me basically a story from each pre-sylvester doctor an attack of the cybermen was not one I was particularly looking forward to because I was already aware of the fan consensus that Colin was awful and all his stories were awful and all of that nonsense. Um, and I was completely blown away by Attack of the Sidemen. I was completely blown away by how great Colin was, by how strong and how funny he was. And just what a great story Attack of the Sidemen is. And my opinion has never changed. I've seen it oodles of times, most recently just a couple of years ago. And I still think it's a fantastic story with great characters, great actors, some great dialogue, really well directed, some great action, wonderfully atmospheric stuff on Telos and in the sewers. I mean, it's got Brian Glover in it, for God's sake. What more do you want? So, yeah, I am definitely taking Attack of the Cybermen with me to a desert island. My fourth choice, well, I mean... You've got to have a Sylvester and Sophie in there. I've got a Tom and Lala, and Sylvester and Sophie are up there with my favourite Doctor and companion as well. So I think I'm going to choose The Curse of Fenric this time of while. I mean, there are a couple of other choices, because I mean, season 25 and 26 are great. Remembrance, Greatest Show, Ghost Light, Survival. But I can only take one, so it's going to be The Curse of Fenric, which to me is just emblematic of the whole era. It's Sylvester and Sophie at their best. It's just a great horror story. And it, it just shows the the amazing quality of the show at this time. And how completely dumbass the BBC were. In, in just They just didn't care, man. I mean, season 26 is one of the best seasons ever. And they just did not give a rat's ass. They couldn't wait to get the thing off air. But we can have another season of Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall. Oh, I'm getting off track there. Um... But yeah, I love The Curse of Fenric. I remember the first time I watched this. I didn't actually watch it on transmission because I was on holiday over here in Australia, actually, uh, for the whole month. But I got one of my Doctor Who fan friends, the same one who gave me Attack of the Cybermen, to tape it for me while I was away. And I actually watched it. He actually gave it me back. I actually watched it the same night as part one of Survival was broadcast. And I thought part one of Survival was great. And then I slammed The Curse of Fenric in. And that story just completely blew me away. It was just, it was amazing to watch the whole thing in one go. And um, amazingly, when I got back to school after, after, after a month away, all these people were telling me how great Doctor Who had been while I'd been away. I mean, th th I'm not talking about fans. I'm talking about, you know, the usual idiot brigade that you're surrounded by. Um, they all couldn't wait to tell me how amazing Doctor Who had been. Uh, that, that was my first inkling that you know, something was going on here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, The Curse of Fenric joins Attack of the Cybermen, Shardar, and the War Games, which leaves one place. Now, I'm probably going to really surprise people with my fifth and final Desert Island hooch by actually choosing a new Who story. I can hear people dying of shock even as I speak. But I think I have to kind of choose one. I have to be honest here. And I'm going to, you, you probably know what Doctor I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose an 11th Doctor story. I'm going to choose a Matt Smith and Karen Gillan story because I do love them. They are one of my favourite Doctor and Companion teams. Even if the era did kind of go generally downhill after a while and even if obviously my opinion of new who is not entirely favorable but i'm going to choose as my fifth and final story the time of angels i love the time of angels i loved it on transmission it completely blew me away really gave me tremendous hope for the moffat era which didn't quite pan out but there you go but and i mean i liked matt smith in his first few weeks but this was the story that really convinced me holy shit, this is the Doctor. I mean, this is really the Doctor. And I, I was already really liking uh, Karen Gillan as Amy. And again, she's fantastic in this. It's hard to believe that this is the first story that they actually filmed because they're, they're all, both on top form in this story. And it's just so well done. It's such a great action horror story. It's amazingly well directed. 
Can somebody tell me why Adam Smith, I think his name was, why Adam Smith didn't do more? Because I thought he did an extraordinary job of the time of Angels. The whole, the, it still looks fantastic nearly 10 years later. So I don't really understand why he didn't do more. But yeah, I love the time of Angels. It's one of my favorite stories. And it's definitely one of my favorite New Who stories. So I think that's my top five. Not my top five stories of all time, but the top five stories. Because you can only choose one from each Doctor that I would take to a desert island. The War Games, Shardar, Attack of the Cybermen, The Curse of Fenric, and The Time of Angels. Please list yours below.